thank you, Leanne. Thanks for joining us. We are such fans of the show. We've been recapping it. We've enjoyed watching your journey. Myself as a Top Chef aficionado, I feel like I know you after all these years. We're like old friends at this point. You know, I, I, I want to ask, the, the episode that, that sent you home, unfortunately, felt so chaotic. Everything about that, the camp itself, the cook, it just felt... I mean, these 200 hungover moms, it was, <laughs> it was insane. I felt exhausted just, just watching it. What was the experience like for you? I mean, I think it was super hard because we d had such like physical exertion that, you know, that first day with the quick fire and then all of the uh, activities and we we're at altitude again. Uh, <laughs> I love camping. They're trying to kill me, I think. Um, and... Um, you know, that night we didn't sleep. It was actually really cold where we were up in the mountains. Well, it looked, I know, it looked like it, like before judges table, you guys were all like bundled up. Freezing. And you looked freezing. Um, but our cabins were heated. Like the heat was like in the floors and in the walls. So it was like being in like, a, and it, because we were at elevation, it was so dry. Yeah. Um, just being in LA, like I live at sea level in Hawaii. So it's like, I'm used to so much moisture in the air. And so like the entire time I was in LA, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, we're, it, we slept that night. We tried to sleep and I know none of the girls slept. It was so dry and so hot in our cabin and everybody was just like parched and getting up. I got like a bloody nose in the middle of the night. Oh and my it was gosh. Just, nobody slept. We, you know, we got a wake up call at three 30, you know, where we get mic'd, we, you know, put our faces on. And by the time we got into the kitchen at 5 a.m., it was like, go. Ugh. We didn't have time for breakfast. We didn't have time for coffee. We just had to go into a four-hour cook. So that was really, really hard. Um, I think just not sleeping the night before. And, of course, we were just coming off of Restaurant Wars. Mm -hmm. So that is... You know, Restaurant Wars was a three-day challenge, and that was pretty exhausting, too. So, Man. Um, we, you know, I mean, anything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. And it's interesting because when we think about how we do a normal service, right, it's usually, even when we do those food and wine events, like, it's usually people kind of trickle in a little bit at a time. Like, this was like 200 ladies descending on us all at once. And so it was, it was definitely like, and we were just all like, you know, shoulder to shoulder on this like lunch line. So well, it's like it not definitely only, chaotic. Yeah. Not only is it 200 women strolling in, it's like 200 moms who are like hung over on Chardonnay and are just yeah. like, oh, so happy to be away from their kids and just like ready to just <laughs> stuff food into their mouths. It just seemed like, oh boy. Yeah. Every they're yeah. fueled by karaoke. They were up the whole night before. Oh Oh, I heard. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. I feel like every brunch service that I've ever worked is like similar to that experience. It's like mm -hmm. you never sleep the night before for whatever reason. I'm usually hungover. And then immediately there's like 200 like like women crowding in that are like ready to get angry because I don't have food. I mean, we, you know, like I have a brunch restaurant. I think that was really the shame for me in this <laughs> episode was like, I'm like... I crush brunch every day, but um, I was just, you know, again, lack of sleep and just not, you know, when, um, when I was just about to put all my clafoodies in the oven, like Tom and Brooke were like rounding the corner and they had just spoken with Stephanie and they're about to speak with me. And I'm just like, all right, let's just get these in. And I just, you know, it was like, okay, priority, Tom and Brooke. And I just didn't check. And it was just, you know, again, mental mistake for Tom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I think it's, uh, again, perspective is really good and I'm, I'm super stoked that I made it as far as restaurant wars. I'm like happy to be on the winning team. I won $10,000 and then I won another $10,000. So at the end of the day, I didn't go home empty handed. And that was like, I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leaving with, leaving with a couple thousand dollars is never a bad thing, but yeah. we, we have to for sure talk about um, one of the breakout stars of the season. And I think uh, it's fair to say that that is your mother. We're <laughs> so happy to see you cook with your mother. She, uh, you know, we were holding our breath. We were dying when, when she collapsed. We were so nervous. It was so fun to watch you guys work together. How is she dealing? I mean, what she, magazine covers can we expect to see her on? She's so funny. 
Is she an influencer you know, yet? It was crazy because they, you know, she, <laughs> I didn't expect to like, you know, we morning and like they're just Padma there's no Padma and they're just like cell phones sitting on our cutting boards and um we're like oh okay well what's happening and and slowly you know so I think Melissa got the first phone call um and then slowly we each started getting our phone calls from our relatives and it was my mom and I think I had I think at that point you know had really kind of just been struggling through all the challenges um and just dealing with missing my family and I had a lot of crazy shit going on at work at home. So I was just, you know, trying to stay focused and I found it really, really hard. Um, and so speaking to my mom that morning, I was just like overwhelmed with emotion, which was, it was just so nice to hear her voice. And then, uh, yeah, didn't even know that she was sitting at Moza about to eat a giant plate of steak. <laughs> <laughs> The fact, like I get on the phone with her after you know they do the challenge reveal and I'm like whatever you do mom don't eat the entire steak like just don't eat the entire plate and I, I haven't watched the episode yet but I'm pretty everybody's oh, really? laughing mom ate the entire steak <laughs> I was like yeah I know she did <laughs> she was it was just it was so great to watch her she seems like such a wonderful sweet woman and I I, I, I think I'm most impressed with her work ethic the fact that like having this sort of health moment the next day she's up and making dumplings it's like she she's was, oh my god so it was it was crazy because they didn't know like the the relic our loved ones didn't know that they were going to come to the kitchen and cook with us originally i think they were going to cook with us for like two hours and it ended up being like oh they're going to be here the entire time and so my uh -huh. mom hadn't slept she had gotten up extra early and driven my brother to lax that day oh. um so she didn't know otherwise i would have been like take a nap in the afternoon you know right. so um, you know, my mom's almost 70 and she, uh, yeah, it was hot. You know, you put 22 people in the kitchen plus camera and production and they turn the AC off when we're filming. And so it was just super, super hot. She had a sweater on and um, she had, you know, like it was her blood pressure. She basically had low blood pressure, which is why she passed out. Yeah. Um, and my mom's been a nurse all her life. So it was super scary. And it was like really amazing that, you know, Brian helped out and like everyone's loved ones came over and like tended to my mom. And uh, eventually the, uh, the ambulance and the fire department came. It was like my mom's like sitting in the back and she's got like five like strapping young firemen around her. And she's like, oh, I know exactly what's going on with me right now. And she's like telling them about her medication and everything. So um, she was fine and she went home and she called me. I called her later that night. She's like, are they going to let me cook tomorrow? I'm like, I think so, mom. <laughs> How can we, I mean, I'm like, we'll have a chair for you. We'll have water. <laughs> yeah, she's she's incredible. So she's um she's actually an, a really amazing baker. She's like a oh, self-taught really? self cook, but like an incredible baker. Like oh. my friends in school used to hate me because I'd get sent to school with like pastries and stuff and they're yeah. like brown noser. So <laughs> Well, she, she sounds great. And, and, you know, give her our love because she's one of our favorite parts of the season, I think. Um, you know, I, I, I do know, you know, you talked about your wedding on the show, which I know, unfortunately, has been postponed, which is such mm -hmm. a bummer. I do have to ask, though, um, will your wedding still be a baked beans theme? <laughs> like just just like a row like a table full of like baked beans just hotel pans well i was thinking i know in the, ep in the episode in the episode you said you know because you win the quick fair you get ten thousand, which yep. is amazing like maybe i'll put it through you know to a baked bean themed wedding i i'm thinking automatically my i don't know where your mind goes mine goes to like a baked bean like fountain like a chocolate <laughs> fountain yeah. which like logistically isn't the most practical but this isn't oh. about like practicality this is this is about... we were actually going to do baked bean wrestling so yeah oh, oh there you go that's amazing so what so uh, all jokes aside what is happening with your wedding is that, i'm assuming i mean it's so interesting because we we were like we had set a date a while ago but i've been just so busy we've been so busy i've been you know i travel for hawaiian airlines and it was like between the show and then bouncing between Oahu and getting ready to open a new restaurant on Maui. Um, I was just all over the place. And so we hadn't like sent out invitations. Like everybody knew word of mouth and then we're having it at our friend's ranch in upcountry. And um, 
yeah so I was like well I guess this just gives us more time to like do it proper and like actually send out invitations and take our time and you know I, know. I was, well, um, so I, I, I was it, it was a blessing in disguise <laughs> yeah, well that's good I know I, I was selfishly I was a little worried because in the episode you had said something like well this will maybe this will go to my wedding which is in a few months and I was like Leanne <laughs> 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 get on this a little bit here not ready um yeah, yeah no. guys, we i'm yeah. like we've been together we have a child like it's it's like we're married already anyways yeah, so. for sure for sure yeah well it sounds like you are staying very very busy uh you have a yeah. lot of busy for sure and a two girl you know not least of which oh he's amazing <laughs> uh, my little sous chef but um <laughs> yeah it's been crazy you know we had our PPP loan approved for Coco Head Cafe. So we just, we had closed oh, temporarily, awesome. but we just reopened for takeout. And um, I believe our mayor is going to allow dine-in starting on June 5th. But, you know, we have a tiny restaurant. Um, so we're just trying to be proactive and see if we can talk to the city about opening up our sidewalks, potentially closing off. We have um, just, we're off a small side street. So maybe closing off the road and setting out tables um, because there are restaurants on the other side of the street as well. Um, so creating an outdoor eating space, you know, the benefit of being in Hawaii is that we have all this beautiful outdoors um, and we can create outdoor eating areas. Um, Cause you know, it's like as restaurants are being told, you know, you can't have, you have to reduce your feet, your seating by 50%. Well, nobody's reducing our rent by 50 percent so mm. you know we we just need a community-minded solution um to really make sure that the restaurant survive because it doesn't you know it's the same thing for the landlords like it doesn't do any good if your tenant goes out of business because right now there's nobody lined up to like come come in behind them you know so totally right you know we start we started these interviews um sort of as the pandemic was beginning and so we mm -hmm. were talking to a lot of the chefs about you know, what their plans were and, and everybody kind of, you know, like, what can you do? What, what can you plan for? There's no way to plan for this. So the plan was like GoFundMes and it, it is, it is very optimistic. I mean, obviously this isn't, isn't ideal, but it's been, it's been really optimistic to hear throughout the weeks. You know, we sort of like develop ways to get around this. We're at half capacity. It's not ideal, but we're figuring out to go. We're figuring out solutions around it. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear well, that your phone came through and it is, but you know, the, the, the long-term economics of like moving most businesses to a takeout model just doesn't work, uh, sure. especially with some of the rent and, and, and even just the, the, the concepts in general, you know, um, uh, no, it's now doing, they're turning their outdoor seating into burgers. You know, the number one restaurant in the world is burgers and a wine bar. So that's like, if that tells you anything, you know, um, restaurateurs and chefs uh, need to be smarter now about what they're going to do, um, what is going to have appeal, what is going to be that comfort food that is going to bring people out of their houses because people are still, I think there are a lot of still misconceptions about the science and there's a lot that we don't know about this virus. Um, you know, restaurants I know above all have always taken the utmost precautions in, ter in terms of food safety um, and sanitation and they're continuing to do that and you know a lot of restaurants are investing tens of thousands of dollars in PPE and like plexiglass dividers and all these different things for their customers so they can survive and like right now the, the average restaurant my kid just dumped out all the Easter eggs on the page. <laughs> uh, um, uh, sorry. That, that's life now. Oh look at that. Wow wow wow. Um, wow I love it. I love it. We're still <laughs> celebrating huh? Uh, so it's just, you know, we're in this new reality and I think everyone's trying to figure it out. We're not getting a, a obviously a ton of guidance from our federal government. And I think, you know, with a lot of states, it's kind of like a wait and see, you know, like the state of Hawaii, we're a very special case because we're so isolated. So I know some of our senators are making, um, you know, pleas with the FAA about testing people before they even get on a plane to come here. Mm -hmm. um, that would just prevent, you know, having to quarantine anybody because you know we're we have a mandatory 14-day quarantine here right now and uh, obviously that is not very attractive for tourism and it doesn't really scream aloha but um at the same time we want everybody you know so beautiful here um but we have again limited resources limited um hospitals and so on and so forth and um you know the toilet paper thing <laughs> 
<laughs> I so know. toilet paper takes Dude. much longer to get to the state of Hawaii than anywhere else. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard because this is a state and our restaurants, especially um, we depend on tourism. It's like 40% of our economy. Um, so that's how many people are furloughed and out of work right now. And um, you know, my restaurant Cocoa Head in Oahu, I think will be fine because we, we do have a majority of local customers, but it's going to be really hard. We're used to doing 300, 400 covers a day you know, and now we have to cut that in half. So how are we supposed to make up that money? You know, like our, our landlord's definitely not going to cut our rent in half. So, right. um, so we face every, you know, we face challenges, the same challenges that everybody else does. I think it's uh, a little bit more unique here just because we are so heavily dependent on tourism. Um, sure. So, you know, Lahaina, my Maui restaurant is, you know, Lahaina is a ghost town right now. So there are parts of Maui that are busy because they're populated by the locals who live here and work here, but um, other towns uh, like West Maui are just very, very, they're just empty right now. And it's like beautiful, but right. you know, at the end of the day, it's like everything's boarded up and we just need, you know, we need to figure out how to um, sort of create rules and a mandate, you know, that we can send out with the airlines to travel agents and hotels can say like, Hey, if you want to come here to Hawaii, these, these are some of the things you might run into, like having to wear, being required to wear a mask, so on and so forth, you know? And it's just, um, I think, you know, you see a sort of a lot of difference of opinion in terms of, uh, the virus and, and wearing a mask and not wearing a mask. Um, but, you know, this is the new normal, and I think everybody just has to kind of work together and be patient with each other in the meantime until we can get a vaccine and get everybody on the road to recovery, you know, so. Totally, totally. Well, you know, we wish you best of luck with all of that, obviously. I, let's, uh, your son provided a, a lovely segue for my final question for you, Leanne. I have friends who are big fans of the show and big fans of yours who are who are doing what you're doing right now, who are trying to keep everything afloat while having young kids at home. If you have... <laughs> Any piece of advice? Yeah, look, at, I know. Just I, I can't even imagine. I don't know how moms do it. I really don't. Like my friends with young kids, it's just insane. Whenever I just talk to them on the phone, it's just. Hey, come here. Can come say, say hi? hi. Come here. Come here. <gasps> say hi. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh it's okay, I promise for now. Uh, like, hey, hi. say hi. Hi. Like, How's it oh, going? <laughs> He's been playing in the dirt. So. Listen, good for, do it. Why not? It. Good for it. Good for him. But my question for you, my question for you, Leanne, is when you are tired and you're at home and it's been a long day and you have your son and you have your partner, what are you managing to cook for them after a long day after after just working working your butt off? Well, I mean, it's I've been cooking everything since I've been on like on leave and I've been doing R and D from home, so I've developing a whole new concept for the Maui restaurant um so that's been all happening at home uh so we've been eating I've been eating like a loaf of bread every day uh, <laughs> but normally you know my partner is incredible he's like the best he's like an incredible stay-at-home dad um he's also a graphic designer and he's a good cook so he actually cooks for me when I get home um, no pressure wow. with the you know when yeah a new restaurant like it's a it's an all-day restaurant so it was uh 5 a.m well 7 a.m to 9 p.m so wow. um you know first few months Jan december january i was like leaving the house at 4 a.m and coming home at like 9 or 10 p.m wow and so you'd have something waiting for me i'd literally like eat and like pass out and like take a nap and then wake up and do it all over again <laughs> wow. um which i'm kind of heading back into that mode since when we do reopen we're going to be reopening with super skeleton crew like me and my sous chefs um and that's it and so it's going to be back to the seven day a week all day thing um temporarily yeah. until we can get busy again yeah well, but you know i have a great kid i have a great partner and uh we're very very lucky to be out here in maui so i know well it just looks beautiful behind you i i will to when this is all done leon we're coming to visit okay is that please cool? do and please we're do. staying with you <laughs> we can we babysit <laughs> yeah, we can babysit. Dan can babysit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, Leah, thank you so much for your time. We're such a fan of yours. We loved watching you on your show. And best of luck with everything that you have going on. I mean, we thank you. We have full confidence that you're gonna, you know, be uh 
bigger and better than ever with all this stuff. So best of luck. Yeah, work. you know, just moving forward. I think that was a nice, uh, it was nice to, to cook with all those incredibly talented chefs and just serves as more inspiration to, to get my new thing going. So for sure. Well, thank you, Leanne. We appreciate the time. Thanks guys. Aloha. Bye. Bye. <laughs>